The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 26th, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go look at the circumstance of the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We're going to go figure out what they're communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon on this terrific Thursday. Of course, I want you to know that I'm grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in. Now it's not too soon, 877-927-6648, internationally, 727-445-1044. We'd love to hear from you, so let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow trading off 38 points. She's trading at 17,812. S&P back two at 2088. NASDAQ composite off a point at 4894. Russell's off two points at 1138. Gold back three bucks right now. Silver's up nine pennies. Light sweet crude is up a nickel, trading at 49.61. Leading the charge here, dollar wise, the upside. Dollar Tree's up nearly $11. That's up uh, over 13%. Uh, you've got Barrett Business Service up 29%, up $8 and change. Al Nylam Pharmaceuticals. I might have gotten that correct. That's up uh, nearly 12%, $7.50. Genesco, uh, that's up 11%, $6 and change. Minerva Neurosciences, clearly they developed something out here, up 177%, up $6. So it was a $3 stock. Costco is up 5 bucks to the downside. Ionis Pharmaceuticals up 38%, $13 to the downside. Volume behind that, 18 million shares so far today. Signet Jewelers up 9%, a little, almost $10. Intuitive Surgical down uh, 6 So we've got Chipotle's off 4 bucks. We've got things to look at to the upside and to the downside. But the first thing is... Okay, so what are the mess what what are the markets doing? Really not a lot. I don't know if we could really anticipate that they're gonna do too much more than what we see here. And we probably have seen it all to the downside. So if there if there was going to be if the trading desks around the globe, or at least here in the US, were given instructions to start selling before the holiday, uh, we would have seen, we would see a gradual linear approach to selling. Um, you see it every now and then, boy, it's, it is a clear signature. I can't prove it, but I'll tell you that that's what it is.
Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, hey, uh, sorry about that. Uh, a little interruption out there. We say things happen for us, not to us. So we've got to try to figure out what that for us is. Uh, the for us is that uh, my Internet connection went down. But it looks like it's coming back up. So I'm going to do a little multitasking here because it's going to be much easier for me to explain to you or show you or visually show you. You know, most of us are visual with regard to learning and understanding uh, what the markets are doing. If I can uh, actually get back up online here. Um, but then uh, maybe not because now I see that it's dead. So let me let me try to walk you through as best I can what is uh, going on in the uh, market as we as we speak uh, right now. Now I'm only looking at a television screen, so I can see that it looks like the Nasdaq had turned just slightly positive, and the Dow was only off about 20 points. The S and P is about flat or so. And uh, what uh, what I was mentioning before. And, you know, and who pulled the plug were the, were the investment houses, the brokers. They didn't want you, me to be able to explain to you, express to you, or, or show you um, how it is that you can find inst true institutional selling. Not just we're dumping everything, but we're and, – and it's, it, if you take a look at an intraday chart, you'll see it periodically. Um, sometimes you'll see it in the indices. I think I saw it most recently in the Dow uh, several weeks ago. And you'll just see kind of like this uh, little – linear line, almost like a 45-degree angle on a, it could, you know, both on the buying side or the, or the selling side. In this case here, it's usually the selling side out here. And you just kind of see it almost in a 45-degree angle to the downside. And the idea is to sell without spooking the market and spooking folks. That's somebody really trying to unload a position out here. If we would have, if that was truly coming into the holiday weekend, um, because in essence, it, it has basically started right around lunchtime. You know, people are a lot of people are thinking of not working at tomorrow out here. You know, we would have seen that type of selling. We haven't seen that. We did see some topping signals overnight. We actually saw them yesterday by four o'clock in the afternoon. We saw those on intraday charts. We saw those on the. Uh, hey, I'm going to try to post this. Maybe I can actually post something in here in the uh, den here. I'm going to see if this works. Give me the high sign, uh, Steve, if you actually see something out there because that would be a positive but we actually saw some uh oh god okay we got that so i'm gonna try to go ahead and 
Skype in here as uh, well, see if I can get that piece of it going. That would be nice. Um, but we did see some topping signals last yesterday afternoon, around 4 o'clock or so. Oh, this looks good. Um, Steve, can you make the uh, changeover to uh, Skype? Give me the high sign. Let me know. Uh, there. Yeah, you okay? Great. I'm going to turn, I'm gonna turn, turn the cell phone off. All right. Thanks, folks, for uh, putting up with that. Uh, hopefully, this internet connection here, and trust me, I paid the bill. Uh, hopefully, it stays uh, stable. So you should be able to now visually see me, and I'm sure the voice sounds better than it does uh, over the uh, phone out there. But uh, one way or another, we'll get the uh, show to you. I'll, I'll show you the 30-minute charts here, and it doesn't matter if we take a look at the uh, Dow, we look at the NQ, we look at the ES. I'll go ahead and just put the ES Mini up on my screen right now. What we can see here is yesterday at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's go ahead and get this correctly. And you and I had talked about this yesterday. We talked about how price was moving higher, doing it with less relative uh, strength out there. That's always a topping signal. Now, when I say topping, I'm not referring to, hey, this is the top. You sell in May. Go ahead and sell and dump everything. That, that, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to a market that is stretched, a market that has to relieve relieve some of that energy, and um, and we got those signals. The actual signal inside of the ES Mini came at 2.30. It really came by 3 o'clock, by 1,500 hours out here. It made a nice attempt as, a, as that rally going into 3.30 out here, but that was it. That was the high of that pattern. Now, we should have seen the market pull back much, much more than it has. We actually saw a low out here at about 9.30 last night, I believe it was. I got down about 20.82. That's not much of a uh, pullback or correction for this type of pattern. And this pattern, by the way, present in the ES Mini on a 30-minute chart, present in the Dow futures, present in the NASDAQ futures. So it's consistent across the board. What you and I like to do is we like to go from one time frame to the next, to the next, to the next, to look for those signals out there. So you go basically, or what I like to use, I go from a 30-minute you know, to a two-hour chart, right? So we just expand it up by uh, four. If we take a look at the, now here I'll switch back to the uh, NASDAQ as we speak inside the nasdaq out here the same time roughly the same time it didn't take place until 4 p.m at 4 p.m we had a confirmed and you know it's seventh inning stretch move out there many of you are going to go catch a baseball game during this memorial holiday break and i hope the weather is great wherever it is that you are and uh, so we had a nice seventh, uh, the market had a seventh inning stretch pattern that confirmed yesterday at four o'clock in the afternoon. And the completion of an A to B equals CD. Each time the market has gotten up into this level inside the NQ around the 4490 ish type level is found resistance 448775 to be exact is your taz market profile high and that is proving to be resistance you'll see this red line on my screen out here if you watch us on tiger tv that too was resistance anytime that price is below that um, that is letting us know that it's sellers that are just, it's very subtle, but it's actually sellers that are in control of the market. You wouldn't know based on, uh, you know, the S&P being off a point, or, or, but it's, it's very subtle. That doesn't mean that uh, now the sellers here, it's so subtle that uh, we don't see any kind of conviction behind the selling out here. So the overbought condition, there's really two ways to work off an overbought or an oversold condition. You either work your way by moving sideways, that does it, or you go ahead and it overbought, you, the market retraces, it pulls back. Maybe 0 0.382, 0 0.618, something along those lines. Sets up another pattern here. At this stage of the game, things are just moving sideways. And we have that same pattern inside the uh, two-hour chart. So then that says, okay, well, let's take a look. And we go to take a look at a uh, five-hour chart. So we can go from two to five. Now we'll go ahead and put that up there. We don't see any kind of sell signals inside a uh, five-hour chart. All that we see uh, is, uh, quite frankly, inside the NQ, a fairly wide uh, TAS market profile. Now, that profile that we are looking at right now, that is in the uh, bias to the bears out here. Why? Because if we take a look at those little blue dashed lines out here, closer to the top of that box, in this case, red dashed lines, and this says here that the uh, sellers are the ones that really should be in control. However, price has got to get below 44.66. Now, this is something for you to be paying attention to for the rest of the night, tomorrow, uh, maybe uh, the futures market. Uh, the equity futures, I believe, i, I got to look at the holiday hours out here. Typically, they would be trading, but uh, let's, let's just skip that. If we see a move below 44.66 out here, what you should anticipate is move down to 44.22. Now, some at that point in time might go ahead and write it off and say, hey, the move is over. Not so fast. 
Um, I believe that this uh, move here is just underway. Uh, we are just seeing the beginning of it. Uh, it's, it's a great thing because so many people are in denial of this uh, most recent bottom that is out here. So it becomes a beautiful thing. So many people are looking for that top here in May, and probably a good majority of my listening audiences. And, and I say you're on the wrong side of the trade to be doing that. We don't have any kind of signals. The NQ has got to get below right now 43.91. Uh, and that's a pretty good move to the uh, downside. It's nearly 80, 90 points to the downside, if I do my math correctly. Um, and uh, you know, it gets below that, then the then then the game changes out here. But until that, we've got a nice move to the upside. It has just begun. It's hard to say that we're even seeing our first retracement. I still expect us to see something out here, something more than this. Steve Rhodes with TFN and Dow's off 26. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 24. S&P is flat. The NASDAQ composite is uh, up uh, three points. So gold, let's take a quick peek at uh, gold out here. Let's look at a 30-minute uh, chart for gold. It's trading out at 1222. Uh, this chart here has just got a slight delay, but I will tell you that the uh, candle had formed inside of uh, gold out here as we came on to the show at 1 o'clock, a nice little 30-minute hammer candle. Now, the interesting thing about that formation of that candle uh, is uh, right here. I'll just put a horizontal line 
swing uh, just for, uh, didn't even get down to the bottom of that uh, swing point out there. That's interesting. Not, not, not that it matters. But if we take when you and I were on the air yesterday and we had a caller, um, I don't recall the lad's name from Massachusetts, but but we were talking about um, Rand Gold. And then I was giving him my uh, my premise on what I believe uh, gold itself is doing out there. And what I also had communicated was that uh, gold was getting ready to bounce. It had made a nice viable bottoming pattern on a 30-minute chart out there. And I believe that the most bearish thing that gold could actually do is bounce. Um, and that began last night. At 10 o'clock yesterday morning was when we got the uh, first, well, we actually didn't get the first signal until 1030. You got some follow through at 11 o'clock. And it looked like uh, late last night, about 930, that in fact, uh, we were going to see the fruition of uh, gold moving to that target area. I think it was around the 1260, 1270-ish range that I had uh, given to you. In fact, everything looked pretty good until about 1030 this morning when there was another hammer candle that had formed out here. So it was a retracement of that first move, and we saw it close below that. You know, so does this hammer candle right now that formed here at 1 o'clock mean anything? Well, this is an area of support. It's held as support. If I try to put gold on a 30-minute basis, just look for its market profiles. Let's go do that. Give me a moment here. I'll uh, switch over. Uh, we'll keep it on the uh, – now. we'll switch this to a 30-minute time frame. Well, then we'll go ahead and put our 30-minute uh, profiles up on the uh, screen out here. Give me a moment to do that. See if there's any type of information that we can glean from from this. Uh, those are 60 that are showing up or will be showing up here. No, it's going to be 30 in a moment. There we go. So it's just the red lines that I want you to pay attention to. Well, okay. So there's not anything here, even on a 30-minute basis. There's no, There was no reason for price to have actually stopped at where it did other than it was a prior area of support way back into yesterday morning. So with regard to TAS market profiles, there's, there's basically nothing good out here for gold. Now, the, the mere fact if gold continues to go down today, tomorrow, um, we're going to get to a stage where it is possible for gold to find a bottom, even as bearish as I am. It, it's I open myself up to that possibility. It's also possible that at that point in time, that that exact point in time, that uh, we get to that uh, area, that level. There's some other tools that I have in my chart, and I'm going to do a webinar for folks so I can show them exactly how to, to use those tools. It's also at that point in time where if gold does not stop um, going, then it's also another big bearish signal out here. For me, the uh, better, more bearish is that we see a bounce in gold, which maybe we get to yes, tomorrow or something. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow would be. Now there's no jobs report. Eh, there's a talk about yelling, speaking somewhere. Oh, there's a brand new market profile. How about that uh, formed out here? Oh, see, if we just wait long enough, you know, the uh, the trading gods will go ahead and, and uh, give one to us. So we have a brand new TAS market profile that just formed was forming just as we were speaking out here in the last three minutes out here. And that says resistance inside gold, 1226 support is down at the 1221 level. Uh, that box has kind of got a uh, more of a bearish connotation to it as well on the 30-minute uh, uh, time frame. But uh, um, so we're, we're, we're at, we're not there just yet, but we're at an important point. But if we, my preference is to see a bouncing cold, you would, uh, because then that'll make the bearish pattern that I'm looking at come to fruition um, with, with zero doubts, with zero doubts inside of my mind out here. Okay, um, so that's what's going on. Now, silver, you know, silver has actually got a little bit of bounce in its uh, step, but no big deal, basically flat, up seven pennies out here. Um, uh, my my larger focus really is on uh, gold and what it's doing. Let's take a look at light sweet crude out here. Uh, it got up to the fifty dollar level, um, and since has sold off. But as we take a look at this daily chart, let's go ahead and turn off those thirty minute boxes out here. That's just going to be a lot of clutter on a daily chart that we just don't need to see. It's not exactly like this is a bearish reversal candle or anything. So the mere fact that it got to fifty, it looked over and it's come back here there's nothing here there's no sign whatsoever that this is uh, that that was a market top of any consequence now in the case of thank you gdp danny and atlanta and, and the yellen uh, speech out there um but here's the interesting thing is we go ahead and we pull gold back you know you and i we take a look at these different a lot of times we take a look at horizontal uh, price channels out here 
Uh, but there's and but when we when we do look at diagonal price channels, um, which I've got up on my screen right now, and that's what uh, Light Sweet Crude had been traveling. And you see, it's it's really kind of it's broken above the top of its uh, previous price channel. That doesn't really mean anything. Well. On the other hand, it could mean that a brand new price channel is forming. So just as we have these horizontal trading ranges, equidistant trading ranges, we can also establish horizontal trading range as well, those diagonal trading ranges. And clearly at this stage of the game, as we take a look at the horizontal uh, channel lines out here, price has broken out above it, has come back, it's tested it. And what this says, you know, if we turn those profiles back on, we're up above daily and weekly market profiles. You know what this actually says? Until until price gets below not just the market profile high of 48.97, I think it's got to get back below 47.20 to 46.01. You would have to say it really has to get below 46.01 to have any kind of uh, negative or bearish or topping connotation uh, to it. Otherwise, this says that uh, light sweet crude wants to continue higher, probably run up to the next uh, to the next uh, um, top of the uh, of its uh, rising price channel out here. Now, what is that price point area? You know, it depends on when it hits it. But it looks like around the 55-ish area. That's what we'll call it right now. So there's nothing here that looks bearish on gold. If I try to go locate our uh, correlation chart between light sweet crude and the ES mini out here, you know, don't let anybody tell you that that correlation has gone away because I, it goes away for periods of time, like maybe an hour or two. But in essence, it really hasn't gone away whatsoever. So what we're looking at in Light Sweet Crude is it's broken out, right? It's in this rising price channel. Looks like it's establishing a secondary rising price channel. Uh, in the case of uh, the ES Mini, it's above its weekly profile. It's TAS weekly profile high. The 30-minute out here is actually bullish formation. We took a look. And we know that we've got a topping pattern, right? We got that price relative strength divergent pattern. So nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. So if those highs get taken out, that's communicating a ton to you and I. If we go to the longer term chart out here and take a look at the uh, daily, um, you know, it's only the NAS. Well, I can't say it's only that. It's the NASDAQ and Dow that are the ones that are giving just a bit of a struggle. The Dow has hit the top of its uh, weekly uh, trading range. It's a TAS trading range. 17,871 is a level. We saw 17,864 today, 17,869 yesterday. Uh, so that's the area that it needs to clear the NASDAQ trying to get back up to the 4,508 uh, level. But the Dow, as we pointed out, it's up above its trading range. So is the uh, Russell 2000 on a weekly basis. These markets want to move higher. They want to move higher all of next week. That doesn't mean we're not going to have days of pullback, uh, probably the week after. Be careful. Keep your hands. Keep that powder dry. Or move it to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lyft has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, folks. Let's go peek in on a couple of individual stocks. Let's take a look at Apple. Let's look at a couple of charts out here. Uh, the first chart, we see that Apple is uh, trading right now at about 99.86. Most important thing on this chart is the mere fact that Apple is trading above 99.44. Now, 99.44 was the top of its task market profile. The reason why we really want to be focused on our profile uh, aspects of this chart right now is because we're inside the gap or price is inside the gap. Now, that's a gap down with volume, by the way, 114 million shares from April the uh, 27th out here. So you're inside the gap. You know, the question is, is Apple going to go ahead and just uh, repair the window, fill the gap by getting up to a price point of uh, 103.91? Uh, the answer to that question at this stage is yes. In fact, I don't know that Apple is really going to stop right there. Why should it only fill that gap when there's another one that's up a bit higher, up at the uh, April 15th level, down around the 109.73 area? Now, in the case of Apple, you know, and I shared with you uh, this chart here, this daily chart, and this chart here, this is the money flow in and out of uh, Apple out here. So it nets everything out, and it is now above the zero line. That happens to be the uh, panel number two that you're looking at on my screen. And whenever that is above zero, and it is above zero right now, uh, it has done you well to not be on the opposite side of the trade. And it works so well that it gave really a great signal. Take a look at the last time you got a bullish signal utilizing just that indicator uh, took place on the trading day of February 8th. Now, the actual bottom that was put in was a couple days later, February 11th. The price point, um, you know, was about the same out there. But that was your signal uh, utilizing that indicator to uh, not be short any longer. If you had been short, uh, Apple gave you the uh, bullish message. Didn't give you the bearish message in, in Apple until April 16th. April 18th, I apologize. April 15th, you did have a nice old bearish engulfing candle, but that was that following day when price had gapped down um, and said, okay, time to reverse and get to the other side of the uh, trade out here. Take a look at, you know, the same signals really came inside Apple right around, you got the nice confirming type sign inside of Apple during this time period here, uh, uh, middle of November, you know, really as it was forming a, a top, the actual high came in on November 20th. Uh, inside of Apple, one of the more recent. And, and if you just utilize that indicator to stay short or long out here, and, and this has an influence, folks. This has an influence inside the Dow, number 13. It certainly has an influence inside the Qs out here. And it, with the great news is, is that we're going into holiday trading where we've got light volume. So as I say, take that volume thing and stick it in a drawer out here, unless you're going to compare it to volume back on uh, May 28th or 7th of last year. Uh, because you don't want to compare it to two weeks ago when, in essence, uh, we weren't moving into summertime trading out here. So we want to make sure that we have um, uh, additional tools that we're looking at. Uh, we, sh we should anticipate and expect the market's going to go up on light volume. 
out. I mean, that's that's just simply what it's going to do. So this indicator at this stage of the game, Apple is, and it's worked very, very well. I've just just showing you that it's it gave us the bullish message uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, when was it? Uh, can't uh, looks like it was really yesterday when we got that. Yeah, it was yesterday when we got that uh, signal. So Apple's going to go fill that gap. I would say at a minimum, but the gap I'm referring to is the one from April 15th. That says that it wants to run into that 111-ish uh, type area out here. Uh, and if we go take a look at the, uh, and, and until we see other evidence, um, such as that uh, money flow indicator getting back below zero, until we see that, there is, there's no reason to even consider, unless you know something, uh, you know you know the exact price point where Apple's going to go ahead and make it. That's a different thing if you've got that, that intuitive. I don't have that ability. I'd rather just take a look at a confirmation from an indicator. And the confirmation right now says, don't even think about it. And so, therefore, we won't even think about it. If we take a look at the Qs, uh, see what they're doing. They're up 18 cents. Uh, the Qs here, you know, are, are dealing with uh, trying to get rid of this island top pattern that formed out here, right? So if we go ahead and turn off our profiles, let's go do that. Um, inside the uh, Qs, you can see that, well, go on, turn off. There we go. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, horizontal line. So you can see this little island top that formed between the uh, trading session of April 13th. The island was April 13th to the 21st. It was the prior session and the post session, meaning the prior session of April 12th and that post session of April 22nd that formed that little island. Now, there's another island top out here that uh, took place December 29th and the uh, 30th. So we've got a couple of islands out here, but this is where um, this is where the cues are, are headed to. Now, if we're just going to go ahead and use volume as our pattern, well, there's just no way. Uh, 39 million shares to the downside is where that island formed on April 22nd. And yet, oh, I take that back, huh? It was 38 million. So you're, the queues are pushing into the island, even when there's basically no volume in this marketplace with volume. Now, today, 11 million shares. What does that mean we end up with? Maybe about 18 million shares or so. A, a wait for some valid tests out here and make sure Apple is a part of that uh, valid uh, test. So if the highs get taken out, April 19th high, which is what I presume is going to uh, take place out there. Uh, then there is nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And what Apple, or not Apple, what the Qs will do is to go take on that big island pattern from December 29th. And that's where we get the real piece of information out here. But that is where the Qs are headed to. Uh, they're, well, I think they're headed all the way back to their highs, but they're certainly headed to this island first, in the 110-ish area. Then they're going to head back to about 113. 13 out here. Uh, that is on the QQQ series ETF out here. Um, let's continue looking at uh, individual stocks, maybe flip. Oh, the XLF. Let's say the XLF is at an interesting uh, point out here. If I go ahead and put this on a weekly time frame, it probably stands out a little bit clearer to us. Now we can see the XLF. Hey, interesting enough, here's the rising price channel. That the XLF has been in since 2009. So I'll ask you this question. Is, uh, is the XLF in a, uh, in a is, is the XLF broken its trend or anything to the downside? No. In fact, has it tried to break it to the downside? Yeah, it tried on August uh, 25th, right? Or the week of August 24th out there, uh, as well as the week of uh, February 8th. Couldn't bust it down. So what's it going to do? probably go try to bust the upside. Now, how will we know if that's really what it's going to do out here? Well, I would say if we just look at channel lines, we, there's a channel line, channel or trend lines out here. I'll just use a, a tool. I'll just use a line tool out here. We can draw them both. But here's the channel line in essence, right? The channel line, uh, I've got a green arrow pointing to the downside. We're just using the body the body of the candle. It doesn't matter whether it's an open or close. That means I'm using the open. This is the weekly, by the way, that we're looking at, July 20th. I'm using the weekly open of August 10th. I'm using the close of November 30th. I'm using the open of December 7th. So we've got four touch points. Now, interestingly enough, the XLF ran right into the top of that uh, price channel. Um, you know, so it's a channel, which is very close to the trend line as well, but it's a channel, in essence, that I've drawn on my screen out here. If we go take a look at daily and weekly market profiles, well, price right now is just above its, uh, its weekly and its, uh, its daily. The weekly profile number to be watching 2358 out here. So uh, close to about 2358 says, hey, guess what it wants to. So breaking the downtrend channel line out here, this little subcorrection price channel that, that price have been traveling in you know it would be very bullish for the market xlf is number two sector i think right one two or three uh so well, i think it's, it's two or three 
uh, the waiting inside of the S&P 500 out here. We haven't even talked about the SPY. We talked about the ES Mini above uh, weekly uh, profiles out here. So the XL, now volume-wise, hey, from a weekly standpoint, you're at 131 million shares taking on 220 from the week that began April 25th. Uh, even from this gap down to the downside, that had 323 million shares. You know, no, no way, Jose, is it going to have the volume. It doesn't need the volume in order to keep moving higher. Just needs more buyers. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's out 27. S&P is flat to a kind of a, a slow day. It's going to be an even slower day uh, tomorrow. Let's look at a couple of uh, stocks that are falling out of uh, bed. Uh, I, Honest Pharmaceuticals down 39%. Major volume uh, behind uh, this equity here today. When I say major, 20 million shares, um, you know, it doesn't typically do more than about 1 million shares. So uh, let's put this on a longer term basis, see if we can figure out where this might be headed to or what it's breaking through. So Ionis on a weekly basis had a high volume uh, bar down at around the uh, May 5th, so two years ago, around the same time frame. Um, had volume down there of about uh, 24 million shares. You've done 25. This is a weekly basis, by the way, that we're looking at. Um, 25 million shares then. You've already done 25 million shares um, this week. What did I say daily-wise? Daily yeah, 20 million. 20, 20 to the 25 already. 
uh, just today. So if it breaks through the price level of uh, 22 and a quarter, it's going to head all the way back into the 750-ish uh, type range, $9 range out there, I-O-N-S is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, also, the downside, uh, Signet uh, Jewelers up uh, 12 bucks. That's down 11%. Pretty good volume behind this move as well. This is the weekly chart that we're looking at. From a weekly chart, we can see that uh, this here had broken out. Let me turn those profiles off, get rid of some clutter on our charts out here. We can see that this thing had broken out right back here uh, back on uh, February 17, 2014. It's come back into that level. Now, there were 17 million shares uh, when this broke out on a weekly basis. The first time it came back to the levels with 8.8 .8 million shares. That was uh, back in February of this year. However, this week, you're already down with 12 million shares. So it's taking on that swing point. says to me that uh, more likely than not that uh, Signet Jewelers is probably going to come back and uh, get into the 69 to 79 dollar range out there of course it's got to take out the low of 93.45 the week that began february the 8th out there but it looks like that is where it is targeted um abercrombie and fitch anf is a ticker symbol down 18 percent off four dollars and change out here uh based on the numbers that they uh, did or didn't do out here their net sales decreased by five percent this again is the weekly chart uh, and it looks like here's the high-volume weekly bar that it's going after, which is all the way back from August 24th, 2015. So somewhere between the 15 uh, to $20 range. Well, it's already 2048. So um, the top of that is uh, 1999. Sounds like uh, sounds like a uh, Kmart special, blue light special at 1999 out there. So that's where it's headed to, probably 1542. Again, that ticker symbol, ANF, Abercrombie, and Fitch out here having a bit of a fitch today uh how about chipotle cmg let's go see what it is uh, doing out here back uh, about uh, five dollars uh go on come on we want to see this now what has uh, chipotle really what is it really doing out here i i don't know uh not not a whole lot not if we look at the weekly chart doesn't resemble a whole lot other than maybe an a to b equals cd to the uh, downside um yeah, it just doesn't look. It's not the. Uh, it's not the uh, chart that looks that entertaining, that inviting. To uh, so we won't even. We won't invite another thought on that. Uh, how about to the upside? What is it? Dollar Tree. What so Dollar Tree? Apparently they were out with uh, numbers. The Razor guidance for the second quarter up 13 percent. You've got nice volume behind this move. Is this all time highs? Now that's the way you take out a high. Let me put this on a weekly basis. So you've got uh, Dollar Tree out here. Yeah, it's at all-time highs. Um, let's get rid of the A to B equals CD pattern here. We just want to take a look at uh, see on a, a period of time when there's no volume what it's doing. 11 million shares. Yeah, it's taking out a very large B point of a large A to B equals CD with volume. Hey, folks, it's been terrific to be with you. Sorry about that initial uh, segment there when the internet went down, but stay tuned. It's Terrific Thursday. David White is up next, our polar bear. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Andy Heck from 5 to 6. And I'll see you again tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a great Thursday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.